This is for the vibes. This is how it feels to leave a place behind that you worked hard to make home. After feeling lost, after feeling like you didn't know if things could change. This is for when I miss home, because this was my home. Leaving a place has never been easy for me, even if I regretted living there sometimes. The amount of times I have laid on the floor overthinking my decisions, questioning every action and wanting things to change so bad is embarrassing. It's embarrassing because I care too much about things that don't matter. But at least while I was contemplating all that, I had this sick view to look up at. This room became a sanctuary because it was truly my own. Every corner of it screamed me. It was my personality on full blast. And while I don't think materials should represent who we are all the time, and certainly not most of the time, I'd say it's okay to have a space to represent you. If it makes you feel better, if it makes you happier, if it makes you feel safe. And in a place like New York City where everything is so chaotic, a place with so much competition, a place with so much elitism, classism, so many problems that really are necessary, it's nice to have a space to come back to that you really, really love and admire and are proud to have created. Taking all this down meant that this chapter of my life was coming to an end. And I really, really enjoyed living here, but it took some adjusting because I was living away from home, I was living on my own, and I was living in a city. I look back at this past year and I think about all the connections I've made with people, and I'm like, okay, all that happened in one year. The thing about being in such a densely packed place is that so much can happen with so many different people. And I think that's awesome because every year I look at my birthday party, for example, and see a group of people. I like to look back and think, okay, who was here last year? Who couldn't make it this year? Who are the people I'm inviting? And what are the activities we're doing in relation to the activities I did the previous year? And how do I see myself changing this for the next year? It's, of course, a celebration of life, but it's also a time to reflect on everything that's happened in one year. In the same way, moving out of this apartment reminded me of everything that's happened over one year as I took apart the apartment piece by piece, paper by paper. I'm proud of myself for having established routines, even though I've never been able to achieve the routine I want to. It's good to keep working towards them because that trying is bringing progress. There were so many times I struggled here. Don't get me wrong, New York City's fun, but it can be pretty bad sometimes too. And I think I became tougher because of it and I'm a very soft person. So that was very necessary. Um, I'm just ranting, honestly. This isn't a script, but I've thought about all of this so much and my, my feelings are so complicated and I, I want to live in New York again but I don't know when that'll be. Looking back at everything, because the last couple months were the best parts of living here, when I truly feel like I made my deepest connections with people and I was on top of everything, and also I was prioritizing having a good uh, last year of college, that was when everything was the best and mostly my mental health was the best as well. So, it's easy to say that this experience of living in this apartment was amazing, living in New York was amazing, but I know that's not the case all the time. I have to be realistic and know that I did not have air conditioning all year long. My heating was whack, oh my god. I mean, of course other people have it worse, but I'd say I was definitely going through it sometimes in here. <laughs> I think... There's something cathartic about a public cry on the subway. A very vocally gaspy cry. It's not a silent cry. It's not you're just shaking your shoulders. It's there's it's a lot more. It's very a, it's a very physical and vocal cry. But honestly, like I don't have any shame. I'm just like I'm not going to see these people again on the train. So I and if I need to let out my emotions, I just do. So it's really bad, <laughs> hard to control, but you know, I, I don't know how to change right now, but it's like funny because sometimes when I see like 
someone who has clearly been crying in the middle of the street in New York and I'm like okay you're going through it and that's okay and it like I'm not happy that they're crying obviously but I'm happy to see that I'm not alone and maybe that's selfish it's not that I want to see more people crying in public but it's like maybe <sighs> we're just not as alone as we feel sometimes I think My room looks actually horrified. The amount of stuff in here that is just all over the place of how disorganized it is right now is kind of crazy because it's never like this, I promise. I'm not one of those people that's like, I'm sorry, it's actually never this messy. When you come over, I'm honest, I'm like, no, there's something's out of place. But right now, it's not in its usual state of organized chaos. Oh my God. I'm so, woo! I took all this art down. But we're gonna be on to the next one. It's gonna be way better. It's gonna be even, no. This apartment was so great. My time living here was so great. For the most part, obviously we got some, some bad times in there. Not gonna lie, that's just how it is. But it's time. This summer, I am studying abroad in Europe, and I think there's a beauty of being able to go where you wish and be able to have fun there, get to know the culture, get to know people. But this whole like European summer thing does have a tinge of like colonialism to it because it's valuing European cultures. That's why people want to have a European summer, um, including myself, right? Because I'm going and. These are the programs that universities push to because most of the programs are in Europe. And who knows if that's because of supply or because of demand. I think it's a combination of things. And in the same way, like people want to live in New York. But I think if you don't know people, it's really, really rough. And if you're an adult and you're working, how are you going to meet people, you know? That's like a fear I have of living in New York as a working adult, because right now I've been a student. Yeah, I'm really, really sad to see this apartment be so empty. A year isn't that long of a time, so it's not like I had no recollection of what the apartment looked like in its, looked like in its um, initial stages or anything. But it is shocking to see like, oh my God, I forgot that that table was there. And that's what it looked like when I first moved in, you know? That's how small my plant was and now it's huge. And it's so like, I am I am like sick with nostalgia so much of the time. This is just a very, I don't know. I'm, I'm really glad to have lived here. I'm glad that I had access to New York City in this way. I literally had the time of my life. I wouldn't change it, even the lows, which were really hard to get through. I just think a part of human life is suffering, and I, I don't know why this got so morbid. And... It is so hot in here, I am not that disgusting person ever to drink directly from the carton. That is a complete sin, but moving out, barely any dishes left. Oh my god. Here we go. No air conditioning, extremely hot. Let's get out of here. Let's get going. Let's go on to the next chapter. Woo! <laughs> but it's time. Cue the sad montage. First year living in New York. It's over. <laughs> It's Sunday, 10 a.m., June 12th. These are my last full days in New York City. On the 4th of July, we're all gonna die. I did the 5k, 32 minutes. I'm so happy. Oh my god. 
got people watching. Do you know? Oh wait, you don't know Conan Gray. Hmm? What is a country but a borderless sentence, a life? What is a country but a life sentence? You can color that in. You can call it the history of memory. Migration can be triggered by the angle of sunlight, indicating a change in season, temperature, plant life, and food supply. Female monarchs lay eggs along the route. Every history has more than one thread, each thread a story of division. The journey takes 4,830 miles, more than the length of this country. The monarchs that fly south will not make it back north. Each departure then is final. Only their children return. Only the future revisits the past. What is a country but a borderless sentence? A life. What is a country but a life sentence? Ride on! <laughs> Magnolia Jackson. <laughs> Six notebooks, one book, oh. three washi tapes, two pens. That's good. <laughs> At the Whitney. Empire State Building, Freedom Tower. <laughs> I've never been to this part of town. It's snowing. Oh yeah. Sister got this adapter because she's heading to Spain tomorrow. Last day is in New York. My last day in New York City is today, and tomorrow I'm going to Spain to start my abroad travels for six months. Yeah, you're gonna go there. And I'll probably continue to post some more New York City footage um, after this because I have a lot of it backlogged for the past year because I've been living here for a whole year and I still have to like go through some of it. So I might be posting stuff out of order, but I will definitely see you. Spain, and I would definitely see you when I'm in Czech Republic. Bye, that's all for now. Thank you to all the people I met this past year and the people who spent time with me. I love all you guys. <laughs> Actually, I probably don't love all of you now that I'm thinking about it, but thank you for giving me some good stories, if anything. <laughs> ah. <laughs> mm. Yeah, closing the New York chapter. That's all for now, New York. I'll come back soon. Bye. Love you. Love you. <laughs> I'm filming this all in Spain at 1 a.m. Girlies gotta do what they gotta do. Okay, that's all for now. Bye. It's 12.39 a.m. Let's record a voiceover. <laughs> Ladies, are you ready? Okay, Sufjan Stevens, summer voiceover.